The Rain Garden subsidy is offered by the City of Peterborough through its Rethink the Rain program. The City has partnered with GreenUp, Central and Eastern Ontario's leading non-profit environmental charity and local rain garden expert to provide educational resources and support to subsidy applicants. It's natural to feel a little overwhelmed the first time you build a rain garden, especially if you're new to gardening. Once you understand the basics of rain gardening, you can create a garden that suits the conditions of your site as well as your own personality and style. Flexibility is key throughout the design and construction process. All rain gardens have quirks, many of which aren't apparent until you begin construction. Adjusting your plan to fit the site is normal and learning as you go is part of the fun. What are the key features of a rain garden? A rain garden is a shallow bowl-shaped garden filled with plants and well-draining soil that takes in rainwater, also called runoff, from hard surfaces. By diverting and absorbing runoff, they can help restore the natural water cycle. Rain gardens are not ponds. In fact, they're frequently dry. They are designed to hold rainwater for no more than 24 to 48 hours until it is fully diverted and absorbed into the ground. All rain gardens consist of a level base that allows water to pool temporarily during rain events, the bottom of the bowl, slightly sloped sides and or berms which hold the water in the bowl, one or more inlets where water enters the garden, an outlet where water can safely leave the garden if it enters faster than it can be absorbed. We discuss each of these features in more detail later in the video. Choosing a site. The following should be considered when choosing a location for your rain garden. A rain garden should be at least three meters downslope from the foundation of your home and any nearby structures. A rain garden should be located on relatively flat land, meaning land with a slope between 1 and 5%. A rain garden should be outside the canopy or drip zone of any existing trees. You may need to adjust the shape and size of your rain garden to avoid underground utilities or sprinkler systems and to ensure the garden doesn't extend into the municipal right-of-way. To identify where utilities are buried, you will need to order locates through Ontario One Call. Visit www.ontarioonecall.ca to submit your request. If you need help choosing an appropriate site, refer to the application guide for more details or contact your local rain garden expert for guidance. Designing your garden. The specific size, shape, and depth of your garden will be determined by the condition of your soil, the amount of water likely to be diverted, the available space, as well as your personal preference. Before committing to a design, make sure you measure the slope of your proposed garden area and conduct a drainage test. Details about how to complete these steps are available in the application guide. Generally, the sandier or faster draining your soil is, the deeper and smaller your rain garden can be. Regardless, we recommend that the bowl of your garden be no more than 0.3 meters deep. Rain gardens are frequently round or kidney-shaped because that is the easiest way to establish a broad bowl at the bottom. However, you can create a garden in almost any shape if your space allows for it. Once you know the approximate shape and size of the bowl of your garden, identify where water will enter the garden, the inlet, and exit, the outlet. The placement of the inlet and outlet is one of the most important decisions you will make about your rain garden. The inlet must be higher than the outlet to ensure that the excess rain does not flow back toward your foundation. Next. Identify the size and placement of the rain garden sides and berms. Berms are typically placed on the low sides of a rain garden to ensure water stays in the bowl long enough to be absorbed. The high sides of the garden can slope gently towards the bowl. 
The outlet is usually located as a notch within a berm on the low side of the garden. If your sides and berms are too flat, you will have trouble keeping water in the bowl long enough for it to be absorbed. If they are too steep, soil and mulch may begin to erode. The slope of sides and berms should be no steeper than 50% or 2 to 1, but preferably less. We find that slopes of approximately 25% or 4 to 1 are best for creating a bowl shape without erosion if your space can accommodate it. If the maximum depth of your rain garden is 0.3 meters, its sides and berms would need to be 1.2 meters wide to achieve a 4 to 1 slope. You should include these dimensions in your design sketch. Your local rain garden expert is happy to help you calculate the size and slope of sides and berms for your garden. Choosing plants. Choosing plants for your garden is fun, but it can also be daunting. Even though rain gardens have to tolerate a specific set of conditions, there are many to choose from. Rain gardens can vary in terms of overall moisture. The shallower and or faster draining your garden is, the drier it will be. A very deep and or slow draining garden will be more consistently moist. Try to gauge whether your garden will be on the drier or wetter side of the spectrum. Conditions may vary within a rain garden too. The bowl will be the wettest part of the garden relative to the sides, medium amounts of moisture, and berms the driest areas. You will probably want to choose different plants for each of these sections. Another thing to consider is the sun and shade profile of your site. Is your site shady, less than four hours of sun per day, or partially sunny, about four to six hours of sun per day, or full sun, at least six hours of sun per day? Choose plants that prefer the conditions you have. Many of the choices you will make about plants are personal to you and your capacity for maintenance. As a rule, Gardens with lots of ornamental grasses, shrubs, and trees will be less maintenance than gardens with lots of colorful flowers. Many of the plants well suited to rain gardens are native species that are found in prairies, meadows, ephemeral wetlands, and forest edges. These plants are generally well adapted to occasional inundation followed by periods of dryness. Some of our favorite native plants for the bowl of a rain garden include native sedges, swamp milkweed, blue flag iris, switchgrass, and shrubs such as snowberry or nannyberry. Popular plants for the drier parts of your garden include prairie drop seed grass, low growing shrubs such as bearberry, or drought tolerant flowers like black eyed Susans, butterfly milkweed, and prairie smoke. You can find additional plant suggestions in local rain garden resources such as GreenUp's Sustainable Landscaping Guide, available online at greenup.on.ca slash planting guide. While we encourage you to choose native plants whenever possible, non-native plants are acceptable as long as they suit the conditions and are not invasive. For a full list of invasive species in South Central Ontario, consult the Ontario Invasive Plant Council's Grow Me Instead guide at www.ontarioinvasiveplants.ca slash resources slash grow me instead. Still can't decide? Contact your local rain garden expert who can help narrow down your list and make recommendations based on your style and site conditions. Ready to build. To start, Mark out the location and perimeter of your garden. You can use marking paint, chalk, or even a long hose to designate your rain garden area. In this video, we're retrofitting an existing garden, so the basic footprint of the space is already designed for us. If your chosen site has sod, you will need to remove it in order to dig your garden. You can remove sod by hand or by using a mechanical sod skimmer. Alternatively, you can kill the grass using passive, low-tech methods such as solarizing or sheet mulching. Your local rain garden expert can advise on each of these methods in more detail. 
Once you've cleared the area, you are ready to sculpt the rain garden. This is often the lengthiest part of the process, so grab some friends to help and remember to take lots of breaks. Begin by digging the bowl slightly lower than your desired depth. You can use the soil you remove to build up the berms on the low side of the garden, and you can add loose soil back at the end. As long as your soil is well draining, you shouldn't need to amend the garden with other materials. However, if your local rain garden expert has advised that you should incorporate compost, sand, or other material to improve drainage, then you will need to dig out the native soil enough that your garden can accommodate the imported materials. Test the slopes and levels as you go. You want the bowl of the garden to be relatively level so it pools with water. Measure the slope of sides and berms against your design to see if they need adjusting. Creating inlets and outlets. There are many ways to direct water into a rain garden. The simplest is to run a downspout extender over the ground so it reaches the start of the garden. This setup is the least complicated and easiest to maintain. However, it may not be the best option if you need to walk between your house and the garden. You may also prefer a less visible inlet. No matter which method you choose, your inlet should have a minimum slope of 1% to ensure water drains into the garden. In this video, we are burying flexible mole piping underground to connect the downspouts to the garden because of an existing pathway. To do this, we've dug a shallow trench from each downspout toward the garden. Take care to ensure the trenches slope away from the gutter, otherwise water will not drain into the garden as planned. Placing river rock at the inlet and outlet is wise. It will slow the path of water in and out of the garden and reduce the risk of erosion. Some people like to incorporate river rock or small boulders elsewhere in the garden for aesthetic reasons, but it is not necessary. Test it out. Once you're happy with the basic shape of your garden and the location of the inlet and outlet, the best way to verify your work is to test it out. If there's no rain in the forecast, use a garden hose to run water into the garden via the inlet. Observe what the water does and where it goes. Ensure that it flows towards the outlet and not back towards your home. Does it pool as you expected? Does it appear to be draining? If not, continue making adjustments to the shape of the garden until you're happy with it. Mulching and planting. The tough part is over. Now it's time to plant and mulch your garden. It's a good idea to lay out all of your plants before you put them into the ground. Does it look how you imagined? Once you're happy with the arrangement, you can begin planting. Keep in mind that you can make changes down the line if necessary. When planting, don't bury your plants too deeply. This is especially true for shrubs and trees, which should have their root flares even with the level of the soil. Mulch is an important tool in your new rain garden. It helps retain moisture and slows the growth of weeds until your plants fill in and knit together. A layer of mulch about two to three inches deep is ideal, taking care not to bury woody stems and tender plants. Not all mulches are created equal. This is especially true when it comes to rain gardens. In general, double shredded hardwood mulches stay in place better than bark mulches or arborist wood chips, which tend to float and move around the garden more. To calculate the amount of mulch you will need, take the area of your rain garden and multiply it by the desired mulch depth. For example, a garden of 120 square feet multiplied by 0.25 feet or three inches of mulch equals 30 cubic feet, which is a little more than a cubic yard. A cubic yard is equal to 27 square feet. Alternatively, there are many soil and mulch calculators available online that you can use. Once you've finished planting and mulching your garden, make sure to water everything deeply by watering directly at the root area for one to two minutes per plant. 
Last reminders. Finally, remember that you don't need to do this alone. You can contact your local rain garden expert for support throughout the process. Learn more at www.peterborough.ca slash rain garden.